Hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. Thank you so much for being here today. I truly am happy to see your beautiful and smiling faces. And we are continuing the conversation about creating your own pattern blocks. And today we will be working on Dartless bodice block that will look like this when you're all done. This is also going to be video number one of three part video series. In the first one, we will create the actual bodice. and the second one, we will talk about the sleeve. And in the third video, I'll show you how to transform this dartless bodice block into a gorgeous and effortless design for a top that you'll be using time and time again, because it really will be such a beautiful and easy base for a variety of garments and a little hint over there. You have already seen this on my channel in quite a few videos, so you definitely will get a lot of use out of it. Now, I gotta tell you that there are some opinions of professional pattern makers out there, which I'm not, I'm self-taught, but I do respect those opinions of the fact that creating a dartless bodice block is almost useless because it's nearly impossible to create a well-fitting garment without any darts. However, I would love to disagree here because I do think that if you create a dartless bodice block, it can be a really good base for a dartless shirt. And as I said, I will show you how to modify that dartless bodice block into a beautiful and effortless and timeless top that you will be using time and time again. So I do think that it is a very useful exercise. So let's get into the measurements. Now for your measurements, go ahead and tie a string around your waist, then grab your measuring tape and you will measure the full circumference of your waist. And we will use just a quarter of that in this pattern block. After that, you will do exactly the same with your bust, going around the highest points of your bust, measure all around, and we're going to use just a quarter of there we go, just a quarter of that, the nape of your neck, all the way to your waist. Once you have that measurement, go ahead and write it down. The next measurement is the one that I haven't shown you before, but I do factor in that measurement with just an average amount of inches in pretty much every single pattern that I show you how to make. And that is your high shoulder to your back waist measurement, like so. And exactly the same measurement we're going to take in the front. When you're taking this measurement, make sure that you are taking it from exactly the same position as you took the back measurement because variation to the front or back will skew the results of your pattern. So, and you will measure this over the highest point of your bust all the way to your waist. Important thing is you don't want to press it towards your bust, you just want to go over it like so. The next measurement that we're going to take is going to be your shoulder seam or the width of your shoulder, which we're going to take from the base of the neck or from the same spot where you took your previous measurement, right? So from this spot over here, all the way to the edge of your shoulder. And here's another measurement that you haven't seen me measure before, but I do factor it in pretty much in every single pattern that we draft together, and that is your shoulder slope. So when I say I factor it in, I just take an average amount of inches that would suit most people. But today we're gonna be more precise and we're actually going to measure your shoulder slope. There are various ways how to do that. One of them would be to take your measuring tape, to place it on the very edge of your shoulder, like so, and then you drop it like so, all the way to your center back waist. And then you take that measurement. Now with this last measurement, of course, it's more convenient for somebody else to measure you, which is actually true for all of the measurements. It's easier if somebody else measures you. However, if you really can't get any help from somebody to measure your shoulder slope, then you can just use an average value and I will talk about them once we get into drafting. And another measurement, which is going to be back shoulder width, which you're going to measure from one edge of the shoulder to another edge of the shoulder, going through your neck, like so. Alrighty, now that you have all your measurements taken, go ahead and write them down on a piece of paper so that way you have them in front of you as we start drafting. And if you are a member of this channel, then you do have instructional sheets available where you have a little measurement chart where you can write your measurements in and of course instructions on how to draft it step by step. And if you're not sure what memberships are all about, it is a paid function where you choose to support this channel, which thank you so much, I truly appreciate you. And in return, you get perks, and one of them is these instructional sheets that I create for sewing and drafting tutorials on this 
channel. If you would like to take a look what memberships are all about, I will leave the link for you guys in the info box below. And of course, one more time, this is the way I do it. I will explain step by step what I do, how I do, and where I take these measurements from so that everything hopefully is really clear for you. And again, there are many ways how to do this or that in sewing, so truly find what works for you. Let's get started. So first we're going to start with the back waist length, which was the measurement that you took from the back of your neck all the way to your waist. Here it is. Now go ahead and divide it in half right away. And I apologize about the cat. Now we're going to mark your bust line. Take the quarter of the measurement of your full bust circumference, and then you're going to add about half an inch of ease for this particular pattern. Here's that measurement. Next, we're going to mark quarter in of your waist circumference and you're going to add exactly the same amount of ease for your waist as well. Next, let's mark half of your back shoulder width measurement that you took from one edge of the shoulder to another edge of the shoulder. And here you see that measurement right over here. After that, let's talk about the side seam. So that way it's a little bit easier for us to draft the armhole. Go ahead and connect your bust measurement with your waist measurement with a straight line like so. Now it is a very steep contrast from one to another, so we can't really leave it like that. So I'm going to divide the difference in half and then I'm gonna do another line like so. So you see I'm giving a little bit extra room for myself in the waist as well, since this is a dartless bodice block and therefore a loose fitting garment. Next, go ahead and drop a straight perpendicular line from the edge of your shoulder line. Now this line won't be actually visible on the actual pattern block, but it will help us with this next step. Now the next one will be the shoulder slope. Remember that measurement that we took? We want to start with this corner right over here. Now my shoulder slope measurement was 16 and 3 quarters. I'm going to place my ruler that at, so that 16 and 3 quarters is in the bottom corner and then I'm going to angle towards that line that we just drew. And then I will draw another line like so that will cross that perpendicular line coming from the shoulder edge. There we go. And now this is your actual shoulder slope. Now for this next step, let's take a look at the top of our pattern a little closer. For this next step, we will need to find the difference between two measurements, your back waist length and your high point shoulder to the back waist length. So one minus the other will give you the difference that we're going to work with next. My difference is half an inch, so I'm going to draw a straight line half an inch higher than my current pattern shows. And now once that is done, you will see clearly where is the new line and where is the old line and the difference between them. Now go ahead and take your shoulder seam measurement that we took from the base of the neck all the way to the edge of your shoulder. And we're going to do a very similar trick that we did with a shoulder slope. My measurement is four inches. I'm going to place four inch mark right there at the edge of the shoulder and I'm going to draw a straight line to the point where it crosses with the new line that we drew on top. Now drop a straight perpendicular line down so that way it's a little bit easier for us to do the back neck line. And with a dash curved line, do the back neck line like so. And the last thing that we have left to do is the armhole. Now go ahead and drop a straight line from the edge of your new shoulder line all the way to the bust line like so. And then divide it in half. Once you have found the middle point of this line, take quarter of an inch to the left to account for our bodies being more narrow across that part than across our shoulders. The last thing that we have to do is to connect all these three points. Now go ahead and grab a pencil and draw a curved line connecting all these three points. Once I'm happy with this line, I'm going to outline it in my blue pen so that way you can see a little bit better on the screen. And that's it, our back pattern piece is ready. Now go ahead and mark that this is back pattern piece and also oftentimes I will write down the amount of ease I have included in my bust and my waist measurement. And all right, let's move on to the front pattern piece. Now take an extra piece of pattern paper, lay it on top of your existing back pattern piece and we're going to copy a few measurements that we have just drafted. First it's going to be center back and then the bust measurement. 
the waist measurement, the side seam as well, and you're going to copy the shoulder width measurement as well. However, for the front pattern piece, you're going to make it one quarter inch shorter than the original shoulder width measurement for the back because our bodies are narrower across the shoulders in the front than in the back. Therefore, we are subtracting a quarter of an inch from that and also copy the shoulder slope measurement as well. Now remember how we raised the back pattern piece by half an inch in my case, in your case it might have been more or less. Now we're going to do exactly the same for the front pattern piece as well. We're going to take your back waist length measurement and then we're going to take your high point front measurement. So for the back we took the back, for the front we're going to take the front. And we're going to subtract one from another and the given difference is going to be by how much we're going to raise our front pattern piece. And for me, that's going to be one inch. For the shoulder line on the front pattern piece, we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did on the back pattern piece. I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to place it at the bottom of my shoulder slope, and in my case, I'm placing it at four inches because that was the width of my shoulder seam. And then I'm going to angle it towards that new line that we just drew. And once it crosses that new line, I'm going to draw a straight line connecting those two points, and that will be my shoulder. Then I'm going to draw a straight perpendicular line down so that way it's a little bit easier for us to do the front neckline. For the depth of the front neckline, I'm just gonna take an average measurement which is going to be two and a half inches and after that you can play around with it and make it deeper or shorten it, whichever way you prefer, but that is one of the easiest measurements to adjust so I'm not really too concerned about it. Now for the armhole on the front pattern piece, we're going to do exactly the same steps as we did for the back pattern piece. We're going to drop a straight line, then we're going to divide it in half, but instead of taking just a quarter of an inch to the left, we're actually going to take three quarters of an inch to the left, and then we're going to connect all these three points to create our front armhole. And there we go, your front pattern piece is ready. Now, before we can actually cut our pattern out and then sew a trial version and see if it fits, we have to double check one last thing and that will be the armholes, the length of the front armhole versus the length of the back armhole. In my opinion, if you're working with knit fabrics, half an inch to a quarter of an inch difference isn't that big of a deal. Then when you're working with vovens, then this difference really matters. And usually you will try to make sure that your front armhole is actually shorter than your back armhole and in the darted bodice, you would achieve that by making a dart. But because we're working with a dartless bodice block, we will need to figure out other ways how we can adjust that length. But first, let's measure the armholes and see what is what. Now go ahead and place your measuring tape on the edge like so and measure both and then subtract one from the other to see the difference. All right, so my front armhole measures eight and three quarters and my back armhole measures eight and one quarter. So I'm working here with eliminating half an inch in my example. Now to eliminate a quarter of an inch first, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw a line at the top part of my front bodice block like so. And please excuse the first line, it wasn't completely straight. So I'm making another line right over here. And then I'm going to measure another straight line, quarter of an inch down from the first one. Once that is done, I will simply pull up this pattern piece and I will enclose that one quarter of an inch, making sure that the first and the second lines align. And that's it, quarter of an inch is gone from the length of my front armhole. The only thing to remember here is that now your front pattern piece is quarter of an inch shorter than your back pattern piece, which is going to mean that once you make your garment, if you don't adjust the length of your hem, your garment might pull up by quarter of an inch up, which I can totally live with and I always, majority of the times, do curved hems anyway. So for me, that's totally fine and I know that in the end, it will look good. Now another way to get rid of another quarter of an inch would be to actually pull up the side seam. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure one quarter of an inch up on the front pattern piece side seam like so and then I'm going to adjust the front armhole. Once the new front armhole is drawn, you can actually take measuring tape and measure it one more time to see what is the final result. 
All right, mine actually measures eight and one quarter, which I'm really happy about. And I'm going to leave it at that, making sure that the front and the back armholes are even. Now, because I just made the side seam of my front pattern piece a quarter of an inch longer, when I sew an actual garment from this bodice block, I will need to make sure that I ease those quarter of an inch into the side seam of my back pattern piece. And we need to make sure that we ease them in the top part of our pattern. So here I'm just marking the midpoint between the bust line and the waistline. And I'm going to do that exactly same thing on the back pattern piece as well. And that is going to be the area within which I will try to ease in those quarter of an inch difference between the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece. Now go ahead and cut your pattern pieces out. And once you have done that, let's go ahead and double check one last time before we cut our muslin. So here I'm placing it side seam to side seam and I'm just making sure that the armhole curve looks really nice. And then I'm placing it shoulder seam to shoulder seam and I'm making sure that the, that the actual neckline looks really nice and curved. And that also the curve of the armhole on the top looks really nice and even as well. Well, once you have double checked that everything is great, let's go ahead and cut our fabric out. Now here I have cut my test fabric out and here's a little thing that I would like to point your attention to. I did add my seam allowances on the shoulder seam and the side seam. However, I did not add any seam allowances on the armholes and the neckline because I truly want to see the fit where it truly lands on my body. So on this test garment, I did not add any seam allowances on the armholes and on the neckline. Then what I usually do is I grab a hand sewing needle and then I'm going to baste together all the shoulder seams and the side seams. Now that I have basted everything together, let me put this on myself so that way you can see the actual fit on the body. And I should tell you, I'm pretty happy with it. Of course, I'm gonna get a little extra volume in my bust area, but that is because we're working with woven fabric and we're working with a bodice without any darts. So that is absolutely normal. And But other than that, I'm not getting too many big gaps anywhere in the neckline or anywhere in the armholes. And once the sleeve is attached, this is going to be a really good relaxed fit garment. Well, I need to say that I'm pretty happy with the fit. If I do any adjustments, which is going to be just one, but I'll take a look at it. Maybe I have just stretched out the fabric and that is going to be the a little gap in the neckline. And if I do that adjustment, I will talk about it in the next video where we're going to draft a sleeve for this dartless bodice block. So you see, it was pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And I truly think that you will get quite a bit of use out of this bodice block. Now, if you did like this drafting tutorial, then go ahead and click right over here. It will take you to another drafting tutorial that I think you might enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you gained the knowledge and value out of this video, and I will see you in the next one very, very soon. Alrighty, bye.